Hey, I'm Dan Thomas. I got this Wixy SawFence digital readout a couple of weeks ago, and while the name's a mouthful, the tool is cool. The digital readout tells you the position of the fence down to the nearest five thousandths of an inch, or 0.1 millimeters. When you're working with inches, it shows fractional values down to one thirty-second of an inch. Okay, I admit I don't need this kind of accuracy very often, at least not for the vast majority of woodworking I do. But for me, setting the fence to five and three-eighths of an inch using the gauge is easier than using the hash marks. And seeing the gauge read exactly 12.00 inches is remarkably satisfying. The reason it's so accurate is these sensor strips that go on the track. It also has an incremental setting that lets you move the fence relative to a specific position. These magnets keep the gauge next to your fence on one side or the other. The magnets also make it easy to take your fence off and put it back on without messing up the gauge. This latest version uses two AAA batteries, so they're simple to replace. Or you can use rechargeable batteries like these. It fits most table saw sizes because it comes with two 31.5 inch aluminum tracks. You can use one or both tracks, and they're easy to cut to size if you need to, using basically any kind of saw. It works with Biesemeyer style fences, as well as Delta, Jet, and even Craftsman, Rigid, and Ryobi, to name a few. Check out their website for compatibility information, but as you'll see in this video, you can make it work with just about anything if you're creative enough. People have even used it on miter gauges, which is kind of interesting. They've also used it on chop saws, which I guess makes sense too, although the pictures are kind of confusing. I'm going to show you how I installed it on my SawStop PCS, but I'll give you tips for installing it on other types of saws, and since the instructions that come with the gauge aren't exactly great, I think you'll be glad you watched. So stick around and we'll get started. Obviously, the installation process is different for every type of table saw and fence, but I tried to boil it down to the most basic goals. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, so if you need more information, check out the accompanying article on my website. The track needs to be positioned where the fence can't hit it. Makes sense, right? This fence hangs down below the rail, and so does this one. So the tracks had to be attached with brackets, so they hung far enough below the rail where the fences wouldn't hit them. If your saw is like this, then put the flat side of the track facing down and attach the brackets to the top of the track. Make longer brackets if you need to. If your fence doesn't hang down that low and you can position the track close to the bottom of your rail, then mount it with the flat side facing up and attach the brackets to the bottom of the track. In my case, there wasn't really room for the brackets here, so I just attached the tracks directly to the tube. If you have a saw with a sliding extension, I can think of a couple of options. One is to attach the tracks to the extension rail, like this. When you open the extension, you'll need to recalibrate the readout, but as I'll show you later, that's pretty easy to do. Here's another option I found on SketchUp's 3D Warehouse from a guy named John B. It's a wooden frame, and the track attaches to the frame, not the saw. The saw sits on the frame, allowing the extension to slide in and out without moving the track. Check out the article on my website for more information. So as you can see, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Sorry, Gidget, you weren't supposed to hear that. Of course, make sure the gauge can slide on the track without hitting anything. Lastly, the fence and gauge have to move together. If you're lucky, you can stick the gauge's magnet directly to the fence. If not, you can use one of the supplied brackets, like this one, or make something yourself. And like I said earlier, there's magnets on both sides of the gauge, so it can go on either side of the fence. These are the sensor strips, which we won't need until the end. As I mentioned earlier, there's two aluminum tracks, each 31 and a half inches long. You don't have to use both of them, and you can cut them using basically any kind of saw, including your table saw. Just remember to use bypass mode if you have a saw stop. I use both tracks, so I join them together using this pyramid looking bar and four screws and washers. I tighten them down, trying to keep them straight. When I was done, my gauge was sliding pretty smoothly over the joint, but I had to do a lot of filing to get it that way. Before drilling any holes, put the gauge on the tracks and clamp the tracks to your table to make sure you know the best place to install it. 
you may need to use some pieces of wood as spacers to get it in the right position. Make sure it's the same distance from your rail on both ends. It can be off by a small amount, but try to get it close. I used this bracket for the magnet, but I had to cut off this flange and trim the end so it wouldn't hit the track. I was able to hold the bracket and slide the fence around, and everything moved like it should without hitting anything, so I was ready to go. I did some measuring to figure out the best places to drill the holes based on the bolts that were already present in my tube. I'm using the self-tapping screws that came with the kit. They have a flange around the head and a slightly tapered tip. But the heads are too large to fit in the slot in the tracks, so I drilled out holes large enough for the heads. I didn't drill all the way through, of course. At this point, I screwed up. Big shocker, right? And what's worse is, not only don't I know how I messed up, I don't have footage of how I ended up doing it right. But no worries, I'm used to dealing with my screw-ups. This is my out-of-focus center punch, which works great even in metal. I drilled holes the same size as the end of my punch, all the way through the tracks in the center of the large holes. I put the track back on and got it centered evenly on the tube. I double-checked to make sure the gauge moved like it should. Then I used my slightly more in focus center punch to punch the position of each hole in the tube. I've double and triple checked this footage and I don't see anything wrong. But after I drilled the holes in the tube and I tried to put the track on with the screws, the holes didn't line up. I have no idea why. So I ended up drilling new holes for three of the four screw heads, clamping the tracks to the tube again and drilling holes through both the track and the tube at the same time and attaching the screws as I went along to make sure nothing moved. And that worked, of course. This is where I realized something was wrong. It's a good thing you can't hear the audio. After I got the tracks installed and double checked that everything still worked properly, it was time to add the sensor strips. You install them with these little holes facing down. I wiped off the tracks first, then I started peeling off the backing. I started the first strip right at the junction between the two tracks. The strips are pretty easy to attach because they're fairly stiff and the channels on the tracks are deep enough to keep the strips on line. So I just continued to peel off the backing, pressing the strip down as I went along. The strips have a set of holes on each end. They give you this thing they call an alignment gauge that has four pins that fit in the four holes. So you peel a little of the backing away from the second strip and butt it up against the first strip, then put the alignment gauge's pins in the holes so the strips are perfectly aligned. Then just finish peeling away the backing and stick the rest of the strip to the track. Once they're installed, remove the alignment gauge. The last thing I had to install was the bracket for the magnet. I put it on the bolt that holds the lockdown handle. I had to drill out the hole in the bracket a little to get it to fit. And there you go, works perfectly. All that's left is to calibrate the readout, which is really easy to do. Raise your blade some, and slide your fence over until it just kisses the blade and lock it down. Try to get it as close to the blade as you can and still be able to turn the blade. Press and hold the calibration button for at least three seconds to enter calibration mode. The gauge will reset to zero. Press the button again for a second or so to end calibration mode. Once you get good at this, you can actually stop right here. But if you want to be sure, take a piece of scrap wood that you're sure has one good flat side and cut a little bit off the other side. Don't unlock your fence after doing the cut. Use a digital caliper to measure the actual width of the scrap piece. Mine says it's 1.951 inches. Now check the readout. It says 1.945 inches. Take the actual measurement and subtract what the readout says. Always do it in this order. The actual measurement on top and the readout number on the bottom. In this case, the difference is a positive 0 0.006 inches. Slide the fence back to where the gauge reads zero and lock it down. Start calibration mode again. If the difference we calculated is positive, use the plus button. If the difference is negative, use the minus button. One press of the button changes the readout by 0 0.005 inches, and that's as close to 0 0.006 inches as we can get. Press a button again to end calibration mode. At this point, you're good to go, but I'll double check just to show you. I make another cut, this time with the readout showing 1.85 inches. 
I measure again with a caliper, and I get 1.851 inches. That's a difference of one thousandth of an inch, which is well within the margin of error. Listen, I'm not trying to convince you to buy this gauge. If you want it, great. If not, that's fine too. But if you do want to buy it, I hope you'll consider using the links in the description below or on my website. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps support my channel a little. Thanks. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to ring that bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks.